When it comes to cloth simulations, a lot of people think that you need other DCCs like Cinema 4D or Houdini. But I'm here to show you that you can do cloth simulations all within Unreal Engine. What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna show you guys how we can do everything inside of Unreal Engine 5.2. No third party applications needed. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So for this tutorial, I'm using the latest version of Unreal Engine, which is 5.2. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come up here to where we see edit, I'm gonna come down down here the plugins and then I'm just going to make this full screen so you can see it better and inside the search bar I'm just going to type in modeling and right here where it says modeling tools editor it's in beta but we're just going to click this on it's going to come up with this disclaimer I'm just going to click yes and then I'm going to hit restart I'm going to save selected and we're just going to wait for this to restart now the reason i'm using the modeling tools is because i'm going to make a plane which is going to be our cloth and we could do it all within unreal engine we don't need to go to like cinema 4d or blender or anything like that just to bring in a simple plane we're going to do it all within unreal engine now with our scene reset it we're going to come over here to where it says selection mode we're going to come down here to modeling and now we can see we have some basic shapes here on the left hand side so i'm just going to click on this one this is rect that's for rectangle and if you drag it into your scene, you can see we have a small rectangle here. And under here, under modeling, this is where we're gonna have some of our attributes. So like for our width and our depth, let's say maybe 500 by 500. If you bring it back in here, you can actually see what's going on here. So if you just actually left click on there, you can see it now it's brought into our scene, but we have to click accept for this to accept it. So we can still come in here and we could change some stuff as we need it. But let's just say for right now, we we'll do 500 by 500. And then for my subdivisions, I'm just gonna actually drag them all the way up. So 100 by 100, because we want a lot of subdivisions for our class simulation, then everything else I'm just gonna leave at default. So down here, I'm gonna click accept. And now we have a plane inside of our viewport here. So I'm gonna come back up here, come over to selection. And if I scroll down, you can see that we just have a plane in here inside of our scene. Now let me come down here to content drawer and I'm actually gonna dock this in here because we wanna take this plane and we wanna make this our cloth. But the one caveat is we're gonna to have to export this out as a FBX and then re-import it just so we can have some attributes to be able to make this a cloth. And I'll show you exactly how we could do that now. So down here under our content browser, it made a new folder and it was called generated. So if I double click on this, you can see that we actually have a rectangle file down here and this is static mesh. Now, if I right click on this and come over here to where it says asset actions, we can actually export this out and we're just gonna put it here on our desktop. Now I already made a cloth here before, but let me actually just make this one cloth number two, just to show you guys the steps that we're gonna go through. So once I hit save, you can see right here, FBX exporter, I'm just gonna do 2020. And down here under collision, I'm actually just gonna turn this off. I mean, you can leave it on if you want, but we don't need this for the export. And then everything else, I'm just gonna leave as is. Then I'm gonna click export. And now if I look at my desktop, you can see that we actually have an FBX here for our cloth. Now I'm just gonna take the cloth I made before. I mean, they're both the same, but I'm just gonna click and drag it into my content browser. And down here, you have these FBX import options in which we wanna click this top one. This is skeletal mesh. So you wanna click on that one right there and then everything else should be good. So if you scroll down, it doesn't look like we need to change anything out. Just gonna click import all and wait for this to import. Now it's gonna bring up our message log and just clear everything out and exit this out. But if you look down here inside of our content browser now, you see that we have our cloth as a skeletal mesh. We have the physics asset and we also have the skeleton. Now what I'm gonna do is take this original rectangle that we made I'm just gonna delete this out of the scene. And then I'm gonna left click this one that's pink down here, this is cloth. I'm just gonna left click and drag this into my scene. Then I could come over here in my location, actually zero everything out. And then I'm gonna double click on this and this is gonna bring up a new window. Now, when you open up the new window, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. So we have our plane down here. And then we have a couple of tabs over here. Now, what you wanna do is actually come over here to window and then you wanna come down here to clothing. Then we can actually close these other two out. We don't need these at all. We just need our clothing here. So what we wanna do, right click on our plane right here, create clothing data from section. And then down here in the lower right, we're just gonna click create. And now you can see that we have our clothing right here. Now the next step we wanna do from here is actually come up here to where it says activate clothes paint. And once you do that, you can actually see, now we have like this pinkish greenish gradient going on. If you actually just left click and start dragging, everything that's white is going to be actually cloth reactive so if you leave something that's in like this pinkish or greenish in here 
that means that stuff is just going to be static and everything else will be dynamic but for this example i'm going to make the whole thing a cloth and make it dynamic so you want to make sure everything is white and gray just like so and then the next thing you want to do is come up here deactivate cloth paint and now it's going to take a couple moments for the scanning weights to happen and you can see nothing is happening in our scene yet because we have to right click come down here to apply clothing data and then right here under available assets left click on this and now this is going to pop up one more time and now you can see our cloth actually went out of the scene and that's because it's fully dynamic but you can still see that it is right here and the one thing that you might want to do is right here where it says none for max distance if you click this off this is actually going to come up here the weight skinning again but what it's going to do it's going to keep falling through the floor here and it's not going to stop so i'm going to come up here click on save and then i'm just going to actually minimize this and put this onto my second screen for right now because inside of here i'm actually going to move this up a little bit now we're going to add in a simple shape like come over here come down to shapes maybe just a sphere just going to bring it into the center here maybe move it up a little bit scale it up just a tad bit like so if we come over here you want to click on these three dots and you want to click down here to where it says simulate this is going to start a simulation and as you can see the cloth went right through it it didn't collide at all and that's because we still need to tell this cloth that it needs to collide with stuff inside the world so i'm going to select my cloth again then i'm going to come over here inside of my details panel and if i scroll down here to where it says clothing right here the one thing we want to turn on is collide with environment so we're going to turn this on and then right here where it says force collision update we're also going to turn this on and now if i simulate it again you can see now it's actually colliding with our sphere there so that's how easy we can actually add cloth to our scene now so it's just that simple but let's actually go back into the attributes panel for our cloth to look at a couple of settings in there so i'm back inside of my cloth settings here if you come over here and you click back on cloth let's come down here to where it says cloth configs select this down and then right here where it says Clayos cloth sharing sim config click this down as well click down simulation and down here is where you can add like more subdivisions and more iterations as well i looked through the document if you want to see more in detail what these do exactly but i mean it's pretty clear more subdivisions it's going to add more subdivisions to our cloth there and then more iterations basically means it's going to be more cpu intensive but it's going to actually give you better collision on your object but again this might not be something that you want to do during runtime you might want to use this only for cinematic so if i turn up my iteration to maybe like four click on save here exit this out let me play simulation again we're getting a little bit better dynamics here and that's because each one of the points here on our sphere is actually colliding a lot better with our cloth here now there are a few caveats in here right now this isn't beta this is chaos cloth inside of unreal engine 5 and so things i've tried to do before like add in a mega scans asset which had a lot of vertices in there it didn't work with that at all because it only collides with objects with a certain amount of vertices i believe it said around 32 so if you have something really complex in there it might not work but it's worth experimenting with now there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do with cloth but a good thing to go check out is this example inside of the unreal engine epic games launcher so if you come here under samples and you come down here to where it says content examples it actually has a lot of cloth simulation examples in here in which let me open up the project file and show you what i mean so this is that project file opened up so this is going to have all the content examples if you come down here under maps under your content browser you can actually see we have a lot of different examples not only for cloth but for chaos for like the defracture stuff for the destruction scroll down a little bit more you can actually see landscaping stuff decals lighting there's a lot of stuff in here so i would suggest coming through here if you ever just want to backward engineer stuff and see how stuff is made but i'm going to click on cloth here and actually come over here i'm going to click the play button because if i come through my scene now you can actually see it has all the examples inside of here working in real time and this is the one i really want to show you guys because it has chaos clothing properties in which if you look down here it tells you the different properties for like burlap silk rubber and heavy leather like i like using the silk one but it gives you all the attributes to give these different properties here and so this is a great place to just come and try to check out and see how everything is made scroll over here to, over to the right a little bit you can see more examples here with the collision move over here a little bit more more examples there 
So this is really good to just come through and just see how everything is made. You can see self collision right here, where it turned off, where it turned on. This is actually pretty cool here as well. But let's actually go into some of the attributes so you can see where some of this stuff is at. So I'm going to come back over here. Maybe let's click on this one right here. Then I'm going to come down here, double click on the cloth, and that's going to bring us back to this attributes window, which is what we saw before. So if I click on this, and then right here under cloth config, if I turn this down, these are where all the properties are set. So right here where it says mass properties, you could change the density and everything down here. Material properties, this is where you're going to come through and work with the stiffness. And this is where I actually got all my attributes for my examples. So I just came through and kind of copied a lot of these attributes here. Same thing for long range attachments. There's the tether stiffness and everything in there. Collision properties. Now this is where you're going to be able to tell it to self collide, which is right here. So if you have several different objects that are cloth, you can actually have them self collide there, which is another neat property. Environmental properties. This is where you're going to actually come through and change out your gravity scale if you want. And then animation properties down here. We have some more attributes down here, but I go through the documentation to see exactly what everything does in here. But again, this example file is a wealth of knowledge and it has all the different examples down here. Now let's open up one of the examples I showed you guys at the top. This is something that I was working on, but I want to show you guys some caveats that I've ran into when working with the cloth and trying to render it out. Now this is my cloth example scene here. Now you notice if I click play, we just have everything moving in here, but not the cloth simulation up top. Now the one caveat is, see right here under the play button, I still do have the simulation. So the way I had to go about it is make sure you got your starter sequence right here. Click play on the simulation, click play down here inside of the sequencer. And then I was able to get everything to play, but then it kind of got weird there a little bit too. So the one thing that I had to do was actually just come through and just render everything out. It doesn't take too long to render stuff out, but trying to go back and forth and click play between a simulation and a sequencer just became monotonous. And so the best solution that I found was actually just rendering everything out. And once you do render everything out, the simulation plays with the sequencer all at once. But that's just something I wanted to show you guys. Just in case you were trying to use the sequencer with a simulation and you were having issues, that might be something that somebody out there knows how to get around but for me it is what it is but hopefully this helped you guys out hopefully you guys go through play with some of the class simulations put some renders together yourself and have a lot of fun with it if you're new to the channel as always make sure you subscribe give me a big thumbs up it helps with the algorithm and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video i'll see you soon take care